All right, I was wrong, partially, but only partially wrong about Record Store Day. When I talk about that, a priceless Kiss record, and tons more, all that and more coming up on Friday Night Vinyl. All right, dear 33ers, how the heck you doing? How was your week? So if you recall, one week ago, I did a video last Friday and talked about Record Store Day and how I was disappointed in the list and how prices were crazy high and how I was done with Record Store Day. Well, wouldn't you know it, the next day, on Saturday, I popped into one of my local record stores here and I found, where did I put it? I found, and I bought this. This was from Planet of Sound in Winnipeg. And this is by a, a Canadian band called Svengali. They were from Southern Ontario, Hamilton area. And this is a record I had actually been eyeing. There's a black version of this on the Svengali website. And I kind of dug these guys back in the day. This record came out in 1993. And it was kind of that post Guns N' Roses, post Skid Row, but pre grunge going crazy era. So I kind of dug these guys. I don't think they were known outside of Canada much, but I saw this on the record story Black Friday wall and I got it because Canada has a slightly different RSD list than the US and then the UK, right? Every country has their variations. So this was an RSD uh, record store day Canada release, Svengali. I remember, I mean, back in the day, these guys had a huge buzz around them. I remember back in the summer 1991, I was 17, just shy of turning 18. And these guys were playing at a club here and I forget the name of that nightclub. It became Teasers, a strip club. But anyway, at the time, I was just like a few months shy of getting in because the drinking age here is 18. So I remember standing on the fence watching Sven Gali play, thinking, man, those guys were so good. So this was their debut album. It came out in 1992. It actually went gold in Canada. And this was just before grunge hit, right? So after and their second record, they recorded their second record in Seattle. And they just they kind of jumped the grunge train and, and that was it they were done but this debut album is really good man this is the first time this one has been released on uh, on vinyl there's the uh the record inside um anyway good tracks on here if you haven't heard of svengali check out tide night skies i love that track because it was a it was a hit here but the big hit on here was like a ballad called um love don't live here anymore so there you go I said there was nothing I wanted on Record Store Day. I found this one on the Record Store Day Canada list. Svengali. Channel 33 RPM. I should mention, last week I talked about this record, World of Hurt, from this band, Uncle Sally. And apparently this record is now sold out. And that video brought a bunch of traffic to their eBay store, and apparently it's sold out. So if you got one, you're one of the lucky few because uh, good luck trying to find one of these again. But it is a decent album. You can find it online as well. Uncle Sally, World of Hurt. I'm glad these guys got some traction in the past week and hope everyone who got the record digs it. All right, I got some more stuff I want to show you, including that quote-unquote priceless. Kiss record. This is a, the reissue, a reissue, Canadian reissue of Kiss Destroyer. And this, if you see this right there, it says the Priceless Collection. So I made some notes about it because I didn't want to mess this up. But the Priceless Collection was a budget series of records from Polygram in the 1980s. It was apparently only available in Canada. So what they did with the, the Priceless series records, they stripped out all the bonus items, right? Like the original... Destroyer came in a gatefold. This is the gatefold's gone. The custom inners are gone. It's just bare bones, man. It's just bare bones. But there are actually 45, according to Discogs, there were 45 albums released under that priceless collection banner in the 80s, including Dynasty from Kiss. I think I got the Dynasty Priceless Collection version on cassette. And I thought the priceless collection was a thing everywhere. It wasn't, it was a Canadian thing, but I, I know there were, I know the different labels all had their sort of bare bones reissues, right? That there's the nice price and there were some other ones. So did you have these in your country? These discount bare bones reissues and what were they called? i would be curious to know. I was really happy to find this one. This is probably like the 10th copy of Destroyer I own, but I've been hunting for a priceless 
uh, version for a long time because they they are kind of hard to come by. I found this one at a local flea market for fifteen dollars Canadian, which is like eleven or twelve bucks U.S. And the Kiss nerds are gonna be interested in the label. It's got that version of the uh, Casablanca label. And I'll take it out so you can see better. That's the one it's on. Speaking of Kiss, a couple things. Ace Frehley's new single from his forthcoming record was released this week. It's called 10,000 Volts. I know a lot of people are going bananas over this track, saying how great it is. I think it's okay. I mean, a solid six, six and a half on 10, and probably the best we can expect from Space Ace at this point in time. But what's bugged me about the albums Ace has put out in the past decade is the vocals are just so processed. They're so processed. If you haven't heard it, check out the new Ace Frehley song, 10,000 Volts, and tell me tell me those vocals are not processed. They're, there's some auto-tune maybe going on, or I don't know, man. I prefer raw or sounding vocals, but yeah, the track itself, not too bad. I look forward to checking out the entire album. I saw a bunch of pre-order links come in through Ace's website and whatnot. I haven't pre-ordered it yet, but I, that is an album I know I'll pick up. Other Kiss news this weekend, of course, is that it's their last show. In uh, of their final, final farewell tour, apparently, Madison Square Garden. I saw Kiss when they were here like two weeks ago, shortly before Paul got sick with the flu. I've seen Kiss, I don't know how many times over the years, like six or something like that. This is Kiss's best ever stage show. I mean, it was just, it was huge. It was awesome. I could tell Paul was kind of sick because his voice was cracking between the songs. And then mysteriously, when the song would start, his voice was fine. So there, there's obviously some vocal trickery going on and we know as much i mean doc mcgee kiss's manager has said that kiss has been using these tracks on this tour anyway i'm a long time kiss fan so kind of sad to see it all over and i think this is it for kiss i mean these guys are getting too old i think this is done so i'm probably going to order that pay-per-view on saturday to watch the last kiss show i think i gotta do it i gotta do it i'm gonna order the pay-per-view what else do i want to talk about oh someone asked me what i thought about the new dolly parton album rockstar and this is an album so i guess dolly got inducted into the rock and roll hall of fame recently and she's like well not really a rock and roll artist or a rock artist, so that inspired her to do an album of rock songs. I haven't bought it, but I've streamed it a couple times. It's a fun listen. I mean, it's hit and miss, it's hit and miss. Um, outstanding tracks. I think she does an awesome, I'm gonna go further, she does an amazing version of Prince's Purple Rain. She gives the song a real gospel vibe. And I always kind of had that gospel vibe, right? But she just takes it over the top in that direction. It's really good. It's really good. If you're looking for something to listen to tonight, check out Dolly Parton's cover of Purple Rain. That's awesome. I love her cover of Bob Seger's Night Moves, and she does that one with Chris Stapleton. She has a fun version, believe it or not, of Wrecking Ball with um, Miley Cyrus. To me, those are the highlights. There's some stuff in there that I'm like, oh man, I'm not sure if that was a good pick. Like she does a cover with Sting of Every Breath You Take. And when I listen to it, she just sounds like this creepy, uh, I made a note here, what did I call it? So she sounds creepy. I can picture a granny stalking her former lover. That's just, I have this mental image as she's seeing Every Breath You Take, this granny stalking a former lover. I don't know if that one worked again for me, in my opinion. Uh, she has a version of I Hate Myself for Loving You with Joan Jett again. Yeah, that one again. The lyrics is just, I'm not sure if I want to hear Dolly Parton singing about that particular topic, like longing for someone and thinking about the love and they do. I don't know. Uh, what else is on there? I was really looking forward to hearing the song Dolly Parton did with Rob Halford called Bygones. I thought it was okay, uh, a bit underwhelming, but overall a fun album. That's not a record I'm going to purchase. It's a streamer for me, if that makes sense. I got a line in the sand, right? I got to really love a record to buy it and invest the money, but if it's a record I kind of enjoy and I'll just listen to once in a while, I'm okay with streaming it. So to me, the new Dolly Parton record Rockstar is a streamer. All right, 33 ers those are my pickups this week. What have you been spinning? What have you bought in the past week? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching. We'll be back again on Sunday. Till then, keep on spinning.